This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to build an awning for your home or building. These orange awnings have been on the home for about eight years. It's time to replace them with a striped fabric that'll give this house a little bit more curb appeal. We'll be removing the awning fabric on this window and the frame and we'll reconstruct it all the way from ground up to show you how it's done. Here's a rough estimate of what an awning this size would cost you. It sure beats getting it done by a canvas maker. Do it yourself and save. In this video, we'll walk you through every single step required, including frame construction, fabric sewing, and installation of your new awning. Let's get started and show you how it's done. An awning always requires a frame structure to support the fabric. That frame must support the awning and also be attached to the structure. One of the first things required for building an awning is to determine how many struts and rafters will be required to support the awning. Typically struts and rafters are placed anywhere from 40 inches to a little bit more than 60 inches apart. You do not want to go beyond that. Going more may not support the awning well. The amount of rafters and struts will also be determined by the style of window. Here you can see this window has three window panels and we will install a strut and rafter between each panel. Since our window is around 120 inches in totality, we will ins install a rafter and strut approximately every 40 inches. After you've determined how many struts and rafters you'll need, you'll need to purchase hardware. We're gonna discuss that now. For each rafter and strut required, this is the amount of nylon fittings that you'll need to order per your awning. Let's take a closer look at these fittings. Now this is the only aluminum fitting that we will use called the rod and rafter holder. We've chosen to go nylon with everything else because it's less expensive. This is a jaw slide nylon 7 8 inch, and here's an eye end nylon 7 8 and here's a deck hinge nylon. Because we've chosen to use nylon fittings and not stainless steel fittings, we'll only spend approximately $60 per this awning. If we had chosen to use the stainless steel fittings available from Sailrite as well, we would likely spend around $220 for the exact same awning. So you'll save a lot using nylon fittings. This is not the time we want to go over the material list, but we do want you to know that a detailed material list will be found at the end of this video, so you can peruse on that all you want later on in the video. To determine the appropriate amount of tubing you need to order and the fabric of your choice, you'll need to take some measurements from your window. From the furthest mounting positions on the side of your awning, take a width measurement. Write that down. Then use two measuring sticks, we're using yardsticks here, to determine the drop, the projection, and the depth of the awning. You may need a second helper here to determine what looks best for your particular application. That's good. Like this? Mm -hmm. What do you think would be better? Mm -hmm. no, uh. Some important facts to remember when you're calculating the projection, the drop, and the depth is how much of the window view will be blocked by the new awning and how does it obviously appear from the outside of the home. So that's After determining what looks best, you'll need to take a marker and mark those positions on the building or structure. Then write down those measurements for the projection, the depth, and the drop of the awning. We're marking with a Sharpie marker the top mount position. This will be the extreme top of our awning. Then we're using a string with a heavy object on it to determine if that position is directly between the windows. Once we're satisfied that that mark is between the uh, windows, we're going to move on to what the actual drop of the awning is. So we're using two rulers here to determine where we want to place that mark in between the windows for the appropriate drop of our awning, what we felt looked best. Now we're going to verify those measurements with the projection measurement as well and determine the depth of our awning. Now we'll take that sharpie and mark the location of the drop on our actual building structure. We'll do that at each location where a rod and rafter holder will be installed. 
Now we're just checking to be sure that that mark is in the center of those two window panes. And continue to mark the drop position at each one of the locations for your strut and rafter. At each one of those locations we need to mark the top mount position. This is where the half inch EMT pipe will be inserted in the sleeve, so this is the extreme top of our awning. And for our application that was four inches up from the edge of the fascia board. So we're marking those positions as well and being sure that those marks are directly in line with the drop mark below with that string and heavy weight. All right, everything is marked and our measurements are made. Now it's time to determine how much tubing you need and fabric from Sailrite. Let's do that next. For our particular application, our projection is 32, our depth is 27 and a half, and our drop is 23 inches. We've wrote those measurements down on paper. And the width of our awning is 117 inches for our particular application. With those measurements, we can determine how much fabric is required and how much tubing is required. Let's first start with the fabric. Take the projection and the width and add 6 inches for hems and extensions and also possible fabric shrinkage from needle pucker phenomenon. With those calculations, go to the Sailrite website and pick the fabric of your choice. We're going to choose a umbrella awning grade fabric here. Click on the landing page and you'll see a button for the fabric calculator. Click on that. You'll see multiple choices. Click on the rectangular tarps. Now enter those measurements we calculated for the A measurement, the B measurement, and then insert zero for hems because we've already added that into our calculations. We're going to make one of these awnings and we're going to use a 46 inch width fabric. Now the calculator will determine exactly how much material we need to order from Sailrite. Sailrite's fabric calculator will also tell you how many panels it will take to construct your awning. For this application it's 2.72. Scroll down a little bit further and you'll see the fabric rendering. So this tells you how to cut out each panel with the measurements to the top left as seen here. Yeah, it's that easy using the Sailrite Fabric Calculator. Next we'll concentrate on the amount of tubing we need to order from Sailrite. The width of our awning was 117 inches. We need a front bar and we also need a conduit pipe that will be used for the uh, rod and rafter holders to uh, insert into the top sleeve of the awning. Use these calculations to determine how much aluminum 7 8 inch you need to order from Sailrite. These calculations will result in more tubing than required. You will be required to cut them to length once you receive them. Note also that tubing can only be shipped in specific lengths. Oversized tubing must go by truck. However, it is easy to join sections of tubing together via splines. So if you have joints that need to be made because the tubing cannot be shipped easily in certain lengths, you can order the 3 quarter inch aluminum tubing, approximately 6 inches for each joint, to be used as splines. We'll show how to do that in more detail a little bit later on in the video. You will also be required to purchase a conduit EMT half inch from a hardware store. Sayerite does not stock this. Usually hardware stores stock this in only 10 foot lengths, but you can easily add to the length by using a 5 8 inch rod, sometimes threaded, which is about 6 inches or longer, and that can be used as a spline to join the conduit EMT half inch pipe together for extended lengths. A detailed material list will be found at the end of this video. It will include everything that we use to construct this entire awning. We'll now show how to install the hardware to the surface. Next, we'll install the rod and rafter holder. This is an awning hardware uh, frame assembly. It's all aluminum and we're going to place it directly over that mark we made on the fascia board. Then we're going to mark the positions for the uh, two screws that will hold this rod and rafter holder in place. Now 
Now simply drill or pre-drill some holes so that we can insert our number 10 screws. You'll notice that the mark that we use to determine where the uh, top bar will be mounted is almost exactly where the hole is that is used to mount the uh, top screw. So you should be able to see that mark through the top hole when you're positioning the rod and rafter holder. You'll need to follow that procedure to install each rod and rafter holder at each one of the rafter and strut positions. We've now installed all four of our rod and rafter holders along this uh, fascia board and are ready to proceed to the next step. At the drop position, we'll install a deck hinge. This is a nylon deck hinge, which is a lot less expensive than the stainless steel. If you choose to use stainless steel, Sarah carries those as well. Notice that the mark that we placed for the drop is being centered so that the uh, eye end will screw directly over the mark we placed between the windows. We didn't quite get it centered, so we're gonna move the deck hinge up a little bit and remark the surface through those holes. And then again, we'll pre-drill holes and we'll use the number 10 screws to secure this deck hinge to the surface. We are using stainless steel screws and also the deck hinges and other nylon fittings also use stainless steel screws, so no corrosion. Here near the brick, we need to be sure that we mount the deck hinge so that we can gain access to the screw, so we have to turn it 180 degrees. A side note, I had an awning up at this location for approximately eight years and it too had nylon fittings in the majority of positions and they lasted the full eight years and I leave my awning up all year round. So nylon deck hinges are not as strong as stainless steel but they definitely will do the job well. They have satisfied my applications for years. I believe that you'll be happy with them as well because the cost saving is significant. Now that the hardware is installed to our building, we'll concentrate on the struts, then we'll concentrate on the rafters. This is the uh, 7 8 inch aluminum tubing from Sayerite with the eye ends. And we're going to use a crimper to crimp each one of these eye ends in place. Notice the crimper is approximately a quarter inch away from the end of the tubing. And then just simply depress the lever hard until it crimps the uh, pipe and keeps or holds that eye end in place. Okay, we have not cut this uh, pipe to size yet. We're just installing one of these uh, eye ends in only one end of the tubing at this time. And notice it's a secure fit. It does crimp the uh, tubing and put a few little marks on the tubing near the eye end, but that's completely acceptable. Now, if you don't have this uh, crimper, you could use a screw. We'll show that in a, just a few seconds here as well. Let's show using the crimper tool for aluminum tubing one more time here to uh, secure that eye end. This is a nylon eye end, again sold by Sailrite. We have not shown how to cut these to size yet. We just want to install one of these in each end. Now let's show how to do it with a screw. If you use a screw, you do want to pre-drill a hole. We're going to first insert the eye in, then we're going to pre-drill a hole in approximately the same space that we used for the crimper. Okay, do not go through the nylon, just go through the aluminum tubing itself. Once the tubing has been drilled and we have not gone all the way through the vinyl, we're going to use a self-drilling screw. Uh, you can use any size you like. We've just chosen a size that I had in my uh, toolbox. And we're just uh, drilling through the tubing and into the nylon fitting below. So you could install each one of these eye ends in that same fashion if you like.
Each one of these struts will include hardware, so let's take that into consideration when we determine how to cut it. See this hardware adds length onto it, so you have to take that into consideration when you do your measurements for your depth. So, and this hardware obviously adds length as well. So I have that marked here where we want to cut because this is actually the length that I would want for my depth. So take into consideration the hardware. That's all I'm trying to say. And we have it marked to the appropriate measurement. And that measurement is from obviously the flange of the eye end to where the pipe will come here. So you got to take that all into consideration. Before we make our cuts to the struts, we need to take into consideration the two eye ends, the deck mount, and also the jaw slide. When that's determined, you can make your cuts. I like to use a reciprocating saw. This is aluminum tubing, so it cuts easily. You can use a hacksaw if you don't have a reciprocating saw. Wear eye protection. Our awning includes four struts. We'll use that previously cut strut as a guide for the other three struts that need to be cut. Then we'll make our cuts. The length of the strut, including all the hardware fittings, should equal the length of your depth measurement that you wrote down for your awning. Okay, we have the bar with the eye end on one end. Now we need to put the eye end on the other. That eye end on the other has to go completely opposite of this eye end. So it has to go straight up and down where this one is parallel. Or I'm sorry, this one's horizontal. And this one will be vertical. So to do that, I'm going to put that on, on the workbench in the vise. So this one is again horizontal, as you see here, flat with a tabletop surface. I'm going to tighten down the vise so that it won't move on me. And then I'm going to make sure that this one is totally vertical. Then I'm going to crimp it in place, as we did earlier. Go back a little bit with this crimper so it goes in the groove. See, there's a groove here on the eye end and the crimper really likes to be in that groove. In other, in, other, in other words, you can sometimes roll these, which is nice. If you don't get in the groove, it's hard to roll. So I try to get in the groove. But we still want to try to take into account that they're difficult to roll. That's why we do it this way. Good. Up and down flat with a table. To do that with all the struts Cut that the your size. awning requires, we need to do four of them. Do the next one. This is the one we screwed over here. You can see that screw. We screwed this one in. We need to make sure this is flat with the table. And this is up and down. We'll now install those struts onto the deck mounts that are already installed on our building. You won't have to remove these struts, so go ahead and screw the screw all the way to its uh, flush position. All four of our struts are in the appropriate position. Now we'll move on to the rafters. We'll now work on the fabrication to the rafters. Go ahead and install a single eye end to one end of the tubing. Then we'll take it to the awning to determine if we need to cut it to size. Install the rafter in the rod and rafter holder as shown here in the video. You need to take a jaw, a jaw slide, slide it onto the pipe, and then take an eye in and screw it onto this because this we're, we just need to do some testing, not all the way. Then you can determine whether or not this pipe is long enough. Um, you can go all the way out to almost here. Um, but what, what, in the end, what we're going to look for is we're going to look to make sure that this is level. This pipe here. So this can be tension the awning by pulling it in, loosening this set screw on the bottom. And you can pull it in and see how that brings the angle down and loosen the awning 
obviously it would go up like this. So you got a lot of adjustment because of the fact that this whole mechanism can move. You can a lot of tensioning adjustment, which is nice. I like this system better than I do the system behind. And there are multiple reasons that I don't like that system, though it works. Uh, this is something that I, I came up with a few years ago and on an awning out in front of my house, which I will show you. This is the awning in the front of my house where we use stainless steel fittings instead of nylon fittings. But as you can see, the construction techniques for the frame are done exactly the same as what we're doing now. This pipe's definitely long enough. It could be a little bit longer, actually. I'd like it to come almost out to here, uh, but it's no big deal. There's no rhyme or reason why it can't do something like that. So we're not going to cut this any shorter. We're going to go ahead and install the eye ends in this pipe at the current length that it is. Um, so now we can take this apart and do that. These had to be vertical this time, not flat. They had to be the same. So I'm going to install it in so they're exactly the same. Vertical, vertical. Our awning calls for four rafters, so we're going to install the ions exactly as explained on all four of those rafters now. Now we'll install those rafters into the rod and rafter holder, and we'll also install a jaw slide as we did onto the strut. And we'll do that at all four of the locations for our awning. After all the rafters are in place, we'll take a jaw slide and install it on the end of the strut to the eye end. Do that to the end of each strut. Notice the uh, frame is rather wobbly. That will not be the case when the uh, fabric is installed, so don't worry about that. To create the front bar, we need to find the width measurement and add 6 inches. This is a 7 8 inch aluminum, and then we need to cut that to that length. So it's the width measurement plus 6 inches. After we have the front bar length, we need to find the 7 8 inch aluminum and cut it to length. Once you have that, mark the pipe and then cut it with a reciprocating saw or a hacksaw. Now what if your pipe is too short? and the 8-foot length that Sarah can ship easily is not long enough. That's no problem. We'll talk about extending the length with a spline coming up soon. Once the pipe's cut to size, run it through the jaw slides at the end of the struts. You may need a second helper. My helper is Tabby, my daughter. You'll notice that there's a few extra inches hanging over the end of the jaw slide on the two extreme sides. That's normal and expected. Now position each strut so that it's perpendicular to the house, or the structure. The reason we installed this front bar is that we need to take some measurements, and we'll be doing that coming up soon. But let's first talk about how to extend the front bar if required. All right, we have our 7 8 aluminum tubing from Sayorite. Sayorite can ship this tubing in, I believe, 6 foot is the maximum length for a U.S. Postal Service but eight foot is for UPS or FedEx. Because of that, it may not be long enough for your application, but that's an easy thing to resolve. You can still buy it in eight foot sections, say if we ship it FedEx and UPS, and you can use a, a smaller tubing, this is three quarter inch, as a spline. So insert the three quarter inch inside the seven eighths, and then what we would do is we'd add another second piece of 7 8 inch aluminum to the spline and as long as you start it straight as you can see you can use that to join the pieces together. Now because we have to use hardware that will not allow for a screw to be inserted to attach our spline we're going to either use an epoxy or in our situation we're going to use the 3M uh, Fast Cure 5200. This adhesive is incredible stuff. 
uh, once it's bonded, it's a permanent bond. Uh, we're going to use it just in this situation because Cerite sells it, but you could use an epoxy or something else to glue these together. You could also use the crimper that we used earlier to crimp these together, but that doesn't hold as well. So I really recommend using some sort of an epoxy for, for metal or this 5200. Okay, so we got the 5200 pretty much all around the perimeter of the tubing. We're going to slide the spline in there so the about three or four inches and I'm going to roll it as I slide it in there so that it gets the glue all over and we want it about there and I really should let it cure for a while uh, yeah see the 5200 is on there and that's all it's really going to take it doesn't take much but uh, I don't have time to let it cure so I'm going to put the other side on too okay that should be plenty I should try to cap that as soon as possible. Not quite hard yet, but I, don't, I think we'll be able to do it without it sliding much on us. I'm going to hold the spline since it's not cured. It does say that it should cure for 24 hours. I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to spin this as well as I put it on, holding the spline. Notice I don't have hardly any glue on the outside of it at all, which is good. And then once I get about an inch away and I'm just going to shove it in there until they butt it up to each other. So now we have uh, two sections of a 7 8 inch joint with hardly any deviation or anything that looks bad. It looks really good this way. So that's how easy it is to join the uh, tubing from Sarite. If you had to use a spline and you use the uh, 5200 or an epoxy to glue the sections of pipe together to extend the length, we recommend you wait approximately a day for the glue to cure. After that, then simply run the pipe through the jaw ends on the end of your struts. You may need a second helper here for longer width awnings. For shorter ones, it won't be a big deal. We now need to concentrate on the head rod. That's the rod that goes in the rod and rafter holder that will be inserted in the sleeve of the awning. The length of the head rod should be the same as that of the front bar we just calculated for. This is a half inch EMT electrical conduit that you could pick up at the hardware store. Ours is not long enough, so we need to make a spline. I've also picked up from a hardware store this 5 8 inch rod. This is a threaded rod and it's 12 inches in length. I'm going to cut it in half with my reciprocating saw because you only need about 6 inches for each spline. It does take a while to cut in half because this uh, threaded rod 5 8 inch is rather hard. Uh, but only after about uh, 2 minutes of cutting I eventually went through the entire rod. I'm going to skip ahead here. This 5 8 inch threaded rod will fit nicely in the half inch EMT conduit. I'm going to use the 5200 uh, glue again from 3M and apply it to the rod and then insert it inside of the half inch EMT. The half inch EMT is readily available from a hardware store in 10 foot lengths, but we need it to be a little bit longer here, so we have to add a section. If I only have to add a few inches, I will typically cut off about a quarter of the length of the 10 foot section and then add a longer piece to that, so I don't just have a few inches hanging off the edge. I'm going to turn it around as I insert it into the half inch EMT pipe You'll notice that the 5 8 inch rod is not a super tight fit. In fact, it's a little bit sloppy. That's why I'm using quite a bit of the 5200 glue. Since the 5200 takes a while to cure, I'm going to hold the spline with my finger as I turn the other half of the conduit pipe onto the spline. you got to have the pipe straight to get it all started on there well. So I'm turning the pipe as I insert it, holding the uh, uh, 5 8 inch uh, rod to keep it from being pushed into the other half of the conduit. Then when I get approximately an inch, I'll release it and push it all the way into position. Now we should let that cure for about a day or so. 
All right, before we cut it to size, let's take some measurements from our front bar. Our front bar from end of pipe to end of pipe for our application is 123 inches. That's with extra pipe, obviously. While you're measuring your front bar, write down your measurement on a piece of paper. We'll now measure the head rod, which is the conduit, the half-inch conduit we just created. And we're going to cut it to size. We're going to cut it approximately the same size as the front bar. In our application, it's 123 inches. After that's done, we'll install the head rod in the rod and rafter holders. There are fingers that simply hold the rod in place. Before we take the following measurements, we want to make sure that each strut is level and that we have our frame set up exactly the way we want it. We also want to make sure that the struts are perpendicular to the home so they jet out straight. Here you can see I'm adjusting the jaw slide that is attached to the front bar with that screw in front to make sure that the strut is perpendicular to the home. Once our frame is set up and we're happy with it, we can take our measurements. I'm taking a projection measurement now. The projection measurement includes the head rod all the way down to the front of the front bar. For our particular application, that's 32 inches as you see here in the video. Write that measurement down. We'll now want a measurement between each strut. This is in the middle of the jaw slide, right where that screw is installed in the jaw slide. We'll need to write those measurements down as well. So from the middle of each jaw slide, write down the measurements for however many struts you have. Now, with all these measurements that we wrote down, we should be able to construct our fabric blank to fit the frame structure that we just erected. We'll show you how to do that next. We'll be using as an example the measurements for our awning. The width required will include the measurements between each strut plus three inches on the end. Those are the measurements in red. Add all those measurements together and that's the required width of our fabric blank. Then use your projection measurement and add 6 inches to that and that's the height of the awning. This is the required fabric blank size before hems and sleeves. If you remember a little bit earlier on in the video we discussed using the fabric calculator from Sayerite. This fabric calculator agrees with the measurements we just came up with. Sayerite's fabric calculator says we need 3.17 yards and we'll need 2.72 panels or 3 panels. So we're going to sew 3 panels together. First we need to cut them out. We're going to show you how to do that next. How long will it take to sew awnings together? Well, the three awnings you see now took two and a half hours. However, I've sewn many awnings in my lifetime. We've chosen to use the Sumbrella awning stripe fabric. This is called Rumba Cactus. Use a T-square to straighten the cut edge. We're using a soapstone pencil, which easily comes off the Sumbrella fabric later on. You could use a pencil as well. Now we're marking it to uh, 38 inches, and we're putting two marks on the fabric so that we can take a yardstick and uh, mark the fabric at that 38 inch position. That's what's required for our awning. Yours may be different. This will be the projection measurement plus the six inches as discussed earlier. Our awning requires three panels so Deb's just marking down the entire length of the fabric. Uh, three panels that are 38 inches in length. Then she's striking a line with that soapstone marking pencil. She'll now take it over to the piece of glass that she has on the loft table and we're going to use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife. It is recommended that you use a hot knife to cut the fabric. 
The salvage edges from the factory are already sealed, but any cutting we do should be done with a hot knife to prevent raveling of the fabric. Since we're going to be doing single hems and not double hems, this edge is required to be cut with a hot knife. If you don't have a hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. If you choose not to use a hot knife, you should create a double hem. It'll just be more labor intensive. It's not required for an awning because there's just not much movement of an awning once it's up. All right, we have all three panels cut out. Now we need to determine the appropriate position for our overlapping seam. This will just be a standard overlapping seam, and since the fabric is striped, we need to determine how far the fabric should overlap so the stripes come out even. Measuring one of the stripes in the awning, you can see that the ruler measures from end of white stripe to end of white stripe three and three quarter inches. So we're going to measure over there near the salvage edge of the fabric and place our other panel on top so that those stripes are exactly the same as all the other stripes down the length of the awning. Now measure where those panels are overlaying each other and you should come up with uh, the same measurement you did earlier. Uh, you can always pick whichever stripe you want, you just have to make sure that the stripe is the same width. So here she's going to make sure that those two stripes from end to end measure three and three quarter inches. Then she's going to place a line on the fabric when they do. There, there, there are three and three quarter inches right now. She'll place a line on the fabric and that is where each one of those panels needs to overlay each other so the stripes are the same. Strike a line. Now measure from the salvage edge over and you'll notice for our fabric it's one inch. Now we can use that to join any other panels together. Our awning requires three panels. We're marking for that third panel now. We'll strike a line at that position as well. Now we'll be using double-sided tape throughout this construction process for the fabric. This is part number 129. It's great because it helps hold panels together prior to sewing so nothing moves on you. We'll be using it for the overlapping seams as seen here in the video and we'll also be using it for our sleeves. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and we'll base the opposite panel on top of this panel. Uh, being sure that that panel edge lines up with that line we struck down on the fabric. Be careful not to stretch one panel more than the other as you're basting the panels together. We'll scroll the material to make it easier for handling when we sew the panels together. I apologize for all the background noise. We're plotting sails and sewing sails all while this awning construction is taking place. It's business as usual here at Sayarite. Notice that, that scrolled material we used a standard clip that you can find at any office store to keep it scrolled nicely as we feed it through the arm of the sewing machine. We'll be using the Sayarite Ultrafeed LSZ sewing machine. This is a straight stitch and zigzag walking foot sewing machine. We're going to sew a straight stitch down the length of this uh, panel. This is an overlapping seam and this stitch is approximately an eighth inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. It can be a sixteenth inch away as well make the stitch length the longest possible and that will prevent needle pucker phenomenon. It's also important to reverse the stitch at the beginning and the end of sewing as you just saw. Now we're going to turn the fabric panel over with the fabric still scrolled up exactly the same way and sew next to the other uh, raw edge of fabric on the other side. Remember this seam is approximately one inch in width. So we want those uh, stitches very close to the raw edge of the fabric. That's why we turned the panel over to do this side because we can see the raw edge. We're using the Helios P thread which is a lifetime guarantee thread. You could use a polyester V92 thread as well. It's UV resistant but not UV proof. Uh, in the tropics the polyester thread will probably last two to three years before it rots. In northeast Indiana where we are the polyester thread may last eight to ten years before it rots. Uh, the Helios P and Tanara thread will last the lifetime of the canvas, except for it's more expensive and a little bit harder to sew with. It's your choice. 
We've unscrolled the fabric to get to the second overlapping seam to join the third panel and are using those clips again to keep it scrolled nicely. We uh, will take that third panel and scroll it up as well, use a clip to hold it in place, then we'll take it over to the main panel we just sewed together, those two panels we just sewed, and we will baste those together exactly the same way we did and sew them together in the exact same fashion. We will not show this entire process because it's exactly the same. For our awning, it required three panels. They're all sewn together. We're going to unscroll the fabric and we're going to measure it to the uh, exact width that we need. For our application, that's 123 inches. We're going to mark the fabric at that location. And since there's a, a line already on the fabric, we don't need to strike a line down since it's a striped fabric. We're going to use the Sailorite Edge Hot Knife and we're going to cut the fabric at that point. Our fabric panel is exactly the right width and it's now ready for the opening cuts for strut attachment and the hems and sleeves. First we'll discuss the strut attachment openings. That's coming up next. Now on our fabric blank at each one of the strut and rafter locations that we measured out we want to put a mark and at that mark we want to cut a rectangle with a hot knife that is three inches wide by two and a half inches high. This cutout will allow the end of the strut to be attached to the front bar as seen here in the video. Push the pipes high. Here you can see Deb marking each one of those positions. Notice it's three inches wide and it's two and a half inches high. And she's just going to draw that uh, rectangle here at that spot with the soapstone pencil. As I go. She'll do that at each one of the locations where the uh, strut and rafter attach to the front bar. The X indicates that that portion of fabric will be cut out with a hot knife. Deb's measuring down the width of the awning, marking on the fabric where each location of strut will be. Then she'll create that rectangle that's three inches wide by two and a half inches high at each one of those positions. Now when you get to the last cutout, if you're off by as much as a half inch, don't worry about it. There's plenty of room to fudge here. The uh, struts can be adjusted and the opening being three inches wide gives you another option for adjusting left or right by approximately an inch. So don't worry about it if you're off a little bit. From that bottom edge of fabric, Deb is marking up six inches with the soapstone uh, pencil and placing a mark there. This will be where we create the sleeve for the uh, front bar. We'll be folding that raw edge up to that 6 inch mark which will result in a 3 inch sleeve. She's now striking a line to match up those marks on the fabric. This line will be our reference for folding up the raw edge of the fabric to that point. Do this along the entire width of the awning at the bottom. Deb's demonstrating how we'll fold that fabric up and she'll measure it here to show you that it's a three inch sleeve or hem. Before we do anything else we want to take this uh, awning to the uh, hot knife. We're going to cut it on top of a piece of glass and cut out each one of those rectangles that we made earlier on the fabric. This is for each strut that is on your awning, for the end of each strut on your awning. It is extremely important to use a hot knife here. You cannot use scissors. If you don't have a hot knife you must use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun otherwise the fabric will unravel in short order. Do that at each one of those locations.
we've rotated the fabric around so that the uh, front portion of the uh, awning is facing the edge of the table. Before we create the sleeves at the top edge and the bottom edge of the awning for the insertion of the head rod in the front bar, we need to create the hems on the sides of the awning first. Deb's measuring over an inch and a half so that she can fold the fabric over to that mark. This will create a three-quarter inch hem uh, in lieu of the one inch hem that we talked about earlier. She's making the hem a little bit smaller here so that she has enough material that is uh, coming past the cutout opening that will help support the ends of the awning on the frame. We'll show that now. Here you can see the end of the awning on the frame and you'll notice there's a few inches of tubing past this uh, jaw slide that I'm tightening now. That uh, few inches needs to be supported by at least a three quarter inch hem and that's important. That's why we're cutting down this hem slightly so there's enough fabric holding it at that position. We're now using basting tape or seam stick to hold that single hem in place as we take it to the Sayerite Ultrafeed LSC sewing machine to sew it. Sewing some umbrella fabric is not that difficult. Since mainly these hems are single hems, even a home sewing machine should be able to handle it easily. If you have a home sewing machine that can handle about three or four layers of denim blue jean material, you should be able to sew some umbrella marine grade or awning grade fabric nicely. Notice that she folds the raw edge of the fabric up to that uh, line she struck down on the fabric. That line was uh, one and half inch away from the raw edge. It could be more or less depending on your application. No big deal. Now let's measure it at that location and be sure we have at least three quarter of an inch of fabric. And we do, we have Good. one inch, that's perfect. Deb's gonna scroll the fabric again so that it makes it easy to sew our application without a lot of bulk fabric hanging around. And we're gonna sew it with the Ultrafeed LSE sewing machine, straight stitch, longest stitch possible. We're sewing a six millimeter straight stitch. And again, we're using the Helios P thread. You could use Tanara, or you could use a V69 uh, if you're using a home sewing machine, or V92 if you're using an industrial sewing machine polyester thread, as we discussed earlier. Be sure to reverse at the beginning and the end of your stitch. Here's a close-up of that single hem from the bottom side. We'll scroll the fabric from the opposite end and create that single hem on the other side of the fabric, just as we did previously. We will not show this process since you already did it. We'll scroll up the fabric again and use one of those handy clips you can get in any office store to keep the fabric from unscrolling. We'll flip the fan all around so that we can create that sleeve along the uh, bottom edge of the awning. We're going to use the double sided tape and then we're going to fold it up to that six inch mark that uh, we put on the fabric already. We'll even put a strip of double sided tape on this very small end. Yeah, it's that important. It makes the project wonderful. We highly recommend double sided tape, part number 129 for canvas. Now just create that sleeve all along the width of the bottom of the awning, folding it up to that uh, line we put up six inches from the raw edge of the fabric. This creates a three inch uh, sleeve for the insertion of our front bar. And be sure that you're lining up the stripes as you fold this material. Again, a single hem is sufficient. Hopefully, as you can see in this video, the construction of the frame and the sewing of the actual umbrella fabric is not that complicated. This is an easy project and it can help beautify your home or building that you're putting the awning on. You'll notice that the edge of the cutout is not on the fold of this three inch sleeve. That is expected and that is what we intended. Do not be alarmed by that. Now simply take that over to the sewing machine and sew down the uh, length of that uh, 
three inch uh, sleeve we created. Be sure to reverse here at the end well because that a one inch strip or three quarter inch strip is the only yeah, thing ahead. holding the end of the awning in its position. We're going to sew right through the cutouts. No big deal. We're going to sew right over those and we're going to reverse on the other side of the cutout well to secure that uh, sleeve in place. Every time we get to a cutout we're going to reverse a few times and when we get to the opposite end of the awning, we're going to reverse several times there as well to secure everything well in place. We're sewing approximately a sixteenth an inch or an eighth inch away from the raw edge of fabric. Remember that raw edge was cut with a hot knife so it will not unravel. And here we skipped ahead to the end. We're sewing the opposite end and we're reversing here to lock that in place. All right, now all we have left is the uh, sleeve at the top of the awning. That sleeve for the bottom is complete. The final thing to do is to create the sleeve for the uh, head rod, which is a half inch EMT conduit pipe that we're going to be inserting inside there. We're going to take a measurement down to make sure that it equals our projection measurement. Ours was 32 inches, which it does. And then we'll create that three inch sleeve at the top. Obviously, if your projection measurement is not what it's supposed to be, you can modify that sleeve at the top and make it less than three inches or more than three inches. It really doesn't matter. So if your projection measurement is not right, make modifications to the width of the top sleeve. As you can see, it's not quite six inches for our application, so we modified it slightly. We're going to take a few measurements down the entire width of the awning to be sure that it is that way all along its length just to ensure that uh, our projection measurement is very close to 32 inches. It does not have to be exact. You'll be surprised how well it fits, even if you're off by a quarter or a half inch or so. It'll actually look great on the building. So don't be too alarmed if your measurements aren't equal across the entire width of the awning. You just want to try to be as close as possible. Deb's going to strike a line down each one of those marks that she placed on the fabric and then she's going to fold the fabric over to that line as we've done earlier with previous hems. Then we'll apply the double sided tape and baste that sleeve in place. A little secret that uh, can be helpful for using the double sided tape, which we don't show in the video, is to take a hard object after you apply the double sided tape and base your hems in place or seams in place and rub it over the fabric. That helps to hold the uh, fabric in place prior to sewing when you use oh, double sided tape. So if the double sided tape doesn't stick well, you may want to think about doing that. Use a hard object like a scissors or a screwdriver. Don't damage the fabric when you do it though. Now we'll just double check to make sure our projection measurement is accurate. If it's not, it's easy to rebaste it appropriately. So do that now before sewing. Now we're going to scroll up the material again so we can feed it through the sewing machine and create a stitch along that uh, raw edge of the fabric just as we did previously. You'll notice that Deb's using a magnetic guide there to uh, guide the stitch. She's not actually going by the edge of the fabric. She's using the magnetic guide this time. So the stitch is always going to be the same distance from the fold. You could use masking tape if you don't have a magnetic guide. Or you can order one from Sailrite. Here we are coming to the end. Don't forget to reverse here to lock your stitch in place. And that's all there is to sewing the awning. Now we just need to install it. That's coming up next. Installation of the fabric on the frame is easy. We've already removed the head rod. The, this is the half inch EMT conduit and are sliding it into the top pocket or sleeve that we created in the awning. It's a good idea ha to have an extra helper here to uh, slide the pipe smoothly into the sleeve. And then there'll be a little bit of pipe that sticks over the end, not much. Again, a helper is required for large awnings. Silas, my son, is helping me now. It would be easier if I remove the front bar. That has to be removed anyway. But I'm going to tackle going around the front bar and attaching 
the half inch EMT conduit to the rod and rafter holders via those little fingers. All you need to do is release the thumb nut, slide the finger to the side, insert the pipe with the fabric already installed uh, over the pipe, and then tighten down the thumb screw. Do not over tighten and do not tighten them down hard. We need to make adjustments. The head rod is now installed in the rod and rafter holder at each location. Now I'll need to remove the front bar via those jaw slides. I need to remove or release the screw in the jaw slide so that I can easily slide the uh, pipe either to the left or to the right. For awnings with a long width, a second helper can be helpful to help support the pipe as it's being removed from the struts. Once the pipe is removed, we need to reinsert the pipe. Uh, this time we'll go through the fabric awning from the end, uh, catching that hem on the end of the awning, stopping at the cutout opening, going through the jaw slide, and then continuing to push the pipe through the sleeve until we get to the uh, next opening. For longer awnings with a long width, it's a good idea to have a second helper to help support the pipe. Otherwise, this job will be quite difficult. It is an easy job with two helpers. You will need to release the rafter uh, by releasing the screw on the jaw slide to let the su uh, support strut go up or down so that there's not a lot of tension. Okay, Do that at up. each uh, rafter position where the jaw slide okay, is positioned over the strut. You can't see it in the video, but uh, my helper is pushing Stop. the pipe through the sleeve, and that helper is off to the left of the video camera. Right. Push. Keep pushing. Okay, so I just push some more. Stop. Here's a view from underneath going through that last cutout hole. Okay, push. Okay, stop. Okay, now's the time to make fine-tune adjustments, and I'll start with the rod and rafter holder, making sure the fabric is taut and that there are no wrinkles in the fabric. Then I'll tighten down that thumb nut uh, down really hard once I'm satisfied, and I'll do that at each location. Notice here that I'll actually grab the fabric from top and bottom and pull it snug so that the uh, pipe is pushed all the way at the extreme fold of the awning or edge of the awning. Then I'll tighten down the thumb nut when I'm happy with how it looks. In other words, I do push the pipe up into that finger too. Be sure you do that. Do that at each location of the rod and rafter holder. Now make sure the struts are straight or perpendicular to the structure and then tighten that screw on the end of uh, the uh, jaw slide. You can lift the fabric up. There's only a half inch of fabric covering that screw and here we'll show it in more detail. Lift the fabric up to gain access to that screw, tighten the screw, and then lower the fabric over the top of the jaw slide. To tension the uh, awning, pull down on the strut, and then tighten the jaw slide that is attached to the rafter. Do that at each position. Don't pull down super hard because the, uh, the eye ends on the ends of the strut uh, that are away from the building are the weak point of the entire frame structure. Uh, they may bend slightly, and that's quite normal, but don't let them bend too much. They may break. Uh, if there is one weak point, that'll be the weak point. You may want to consider buying stainless steel INs for that location only. Notice how tight it is and rigid it becomes. Now just tighten down any screws that you have not yet done, and you are done. I am replacing all the orange awnings on the home, so I still have three more awnings to make. I'll do that and show you a video of all the awnings once they're up. I want to make a very strong plug for this umbrella marine grade or awning grade fabric. It is a phenomenal fabric and it's well worth the money. It's 100% solution dyed acrylic. It hardly fades at all. It's very weather resistant and the colors stay true for the lifetime of your fabric. Even though it may cost a little bit of money, umbrella marine grade or umbrella awning grade fabric is a must for awnings. Here's the material list as promised earlier on in the video. 
Notice that the uh, hardware fittings, that's per each strut and rafter that's required for your awning. And then the tubing. The aluminum tubing can be ordered from Sailrite, however the half inch EMT must be ordered from a hardware store. Page 2 of the material list includes the recommended Sunbrella fabric to choose, the thread, and the basting tape, and also the tools that will be required to install your awning. You may want to pause at each one of these material lists to study them. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.